tattoo artists of Reddit. Which tattoo made you the most uncomfortable to do? I'm not a tattoo artist, but this is good. I went into a tattoo parlor to do some human trafficking education. The owner was very receptive. As I was showing him the tags used by human traffickers active in our area, he became visibly uncomfortable and started calling over his artists. It turns out they had done dozens of one of these tattoos. They thought it was a fad. When I asked if any of the women to whom they had applied these tattoos came into the shop alone, the owner turned white as a sheet and started crying. He had been branding slaves and he never knew it. Hey guys, we have a new channel where we go over very in-depth stories. Whether it's a Karen on the loose or a story about a mother's perspective on her husband throwing out their daughter's ashes. The link will be in the description. Make sure to subscribe to the new channel. Story 2. I was asked by a research lab to tattoo three hamsters that were identical, like a little symbol on two of them so each could be distinguished. I wasn't sure if it was real or not as the interaction was over the phone. I tattooed a couple of real characters over the years, including one guy who kept getting the same tattoo over and over again, a tiger head, and eventually just got little dots to fill in all around them, and another guy who got vertical and horizontal lines on various body parts to make himself appear larger. He talked about getting additional teeth implanted so he could process food more efficiently and wanted me to be his disciple. Disciple for what? I feel like that's important information. I'm just not being a disciple to anyone for any reason. I mean, come on. Story 3. I worked in a tattoo shop for many years, and I gotta say we all had a good sense of humor. But one that stands out to me as being extra hilarious was an older gay gentleman who got a huge violin on his back. Like, from his butt crack to the back of his neck. We, of course, asked why, and he said, My partner plays violin, and he wanted to be able to play me from behind. And we were like, oh. Also, when he got to the lower part of the tattoo, near the butt, he stood up and revealed that he was wearing breakaway pants, and proceeded to sit butt naked for the rest of the tattoo. The artist doing it was uncomfortable, but the rest of us were dying from laughter. Great day. I miss working there sometimes. The breakaway pants thing? Oh, what a flair for the dramatic. I would have loved to meet this person, I guarantee it. Story 4. Not me, but my tattoo artist. When I went to him for my first tattoo, I made small talk and asked him the same question. He had a stripper come in and ask for a star tattooed on her butthole with cursive script on it saying, I'm a star. While he was tattooing her, his wife and seven-year-old son surprised him with lunch as a stripper kneeled face down, butt up, holding her butt cheeks apart, getting her butthole tattooed. Apparently both the wife and young lady were very chill with the situation, but my artist didn't love having to explain why daddy was putting his art on her butt. Story 5. I've told this story every time someone on Reddit asks about tattoos. I worked in a tattoo shop that my friend owns after I graduated high school. One day, a gay couple come in and one of them says that he wants a dartboard on his butt. Okay, I thought oh, a little odd, but sure. I don't really care because I'm not the one doing the tattoo, my friend is. Anyway, after he says he wants a dartboard, he clarifies and says he wants it regulation sized. The initial confusion took me for a moment and I thought, no. This dude wanted a regulation-sized dartboard on his butt with the bullseye as his butthole. He got it, too. I can't tell if this is an incredible tattoo or a horrible one. I can only imagine it was something that belongs on awful taste but great execution. Story 6. Tattoo artist here. I recently had a man come in and ask about getting a name covered that was placed right above his genitals. He brought in a drawing of a tribal dragon that he did himself. After explaining that his drawing really wouldn't work for the area or the cover-up, he said, I guess that spot wasn't a great place to put my daughter's name, huh? After a really awkward few moments, he left. I didn't end up covering it and haven't seen him since. Now, I see tattoos sometimes that I think people put zero thought into. This goes into negative thought. Like, he had to actually actively decide to put it in the worst place possible. That's horrifying. I hate that. Story 7. Had a druggy couple come in. She put on lipstick and kissed a piece of paper. Her man said he wanted that tattooed on his butt. He then put on her lipstick himself, kissed the same paper, and she wanted that on her butt. My boss told me to do it. I got everything prepped and then backed out. I just couldn't. They were both so nasty and scabby and drugged out that I was scared of catching something even with the mask and gloves and antiseptic. Story 8. Wife's friend is a tattoo artist. She said her most memorable was a young woman who had come in and wanted Johnny tattooed on her chest because she loved her boyfriend so much. Said boyfriend showed up at the tattoo parlor after she finished so she could show off her new tat. They ended up getting in a huge fight and he broke up with her. Couple months later, girl comes back in with a different dude for another tattoo. Says to the artist, This is my boyfriend, Johnny. Story 9. 
I was being tattooed once and this guy walked in, super strange and we could tell something was off about him. He was wanting some kind of Japanese symbol on his forehead and my artist, shop owner asked him if he had any other tattoos. The guy says no and the owner tells him that he won't do face tats without having any others. This guy proceeds to just stare at all of us for two solid minutes without saying a word. Wide eyed like we were from outer space. Then the artist says, Sorry man, I can tattoo the symbol on you anywhere else, but I won't do it on your face without any other ink. The guy continues to stare at us, says, Okay, slowly turns around and walks out the door. We thought he was going to come back and murder us. Story 10. I'm not a tattoo artist, but I worked as a receptionist for six years in a popular local studio. I'm quite talkative and friendly, so I liked to chat up the clients while they were waiting for the artist to set up. A late 40-something-year-old conservative-looking woman came in wearing her work skirt and blazer. I signed her in and got her to complete the consent form and asked what she was getting. She just replied, Oh, just some text on my lower back. I replied, that was cool, and then showed her into the room where the artist was working. I could hear the artist and client deciding on placement and that she wanted the tattoo low enough on her back that her daughter wouldn't see it as it was private. So it's pretty much just above her butt crack. Fair enough, I thought. Afterwards, I asked the artist what she got. The woman had the words, butt harlot tattooed in thick black script. No wonder she didn't want her daughter to see it. She came back a few months later to have a whole other one along the same lines tattooed on the front. Okay, so I would have loved to say what the tattoos actually were. They were both written out. However, YouTube is, uh, you know, they, they demonetize stuff, and this certainly would not fly past the auto-sensors. So you'll just have to be a bit creative with thinking of what she got tattooed. Story 11. Not me, but there was a story on Reddit about a girl who had John's treasure box or something like that tattooed right above her kitty. Then she had a kid with her husband and after birth, the doctor turned to her husband and was like, Congratulations, John. It's a boy. Dude was pissed off and left the room. She told the doctor that John is her ex and her tattoo is still a problem for her husband. What a story. There's no- why do people get tattoos like this? I just don't understand. X's name anywhere- or not X at the time, I'm sure, but partner's name anywhere on your body is a risky move. There? Th there? Really? You just want to ruin all intimate conquests of yours in the future, don't you? Or you just really think it's gonna make the distance, I guess. It's unfortunate that it kind of correlates the people who would get a tattoo like this and the people who have relationships that they think will last but don't. Unfortunate for the person, great story for us. Story 12. Gang members generally have their own people to do their tattoos. Normal street shops don't have to deal with the legitimate gangsters. I tattooed in Oakland for many years and did a lot of local 40th Ave or whatever their street affiliation, but no serious gang tattoos. Turned down a few swastikas, but not many. I put party hard in script on a frat dude's butt while his brothers cheered him on. Butt tattoos on dudes was about the worst. Never tattooed a dong. I always said it would be expensive and nobody ever ponied up the dough. Like was previously mentioned, 90% of the job is super mundane. I was requested to tattoo a deceased person who had apparently wanted a tattoo. I declined because of lack of consent. Memorial tattoos are hard if you're a caring person. The hurt really comes to the surface during the process. I enjoyed sharing their burden for a while. I don't like how OP said turned down a few swastikas but not many. Like, I get what they meant. They obviously meant that they weren't asked to do that many swastikas. But, you have to admit, it does sound like he means that he didn't turn them all down. Or sorry, I mean, he, she, or they, it actually doesn't say, I just kind of assumed. But I do know that tattoo artists come in all varieties, so gotta, gotta cover my bases there. Story 13. My regular tattoo artist and friend messaged me one day that she tattooed a dong. I instantly had so many questions. She explained this long story about him getting semi-hard when she put the stencil on, and then going totally limp the second the needle hit his dong, and how she had to stretch it out with her free hand while tattooing. Finally, I asked what he got. Thor's hammer. I laughed so hard. <laughs> At least it was funny. My coworker's brother-in-law also has a dong tattoo. When he gets hard, it says, ta-da! Moral of the story, if you're gonna get a tattoo on there, just make it funny. Story 14. It wasn't so much the tattoo, but the customer. He was a very strange older guy, and out of seven artists in the shop, only one could tolerate working with him. He came in sometimes days in a row, and normally we don't recommend getting multiple tattoos so quickly. But with this guy, it was like, screw it. He came in one time for a semi-truck with kicking butt and eating kitty written on the back window. A few days later, he came in to get alone and beating it completely unaware of the irony. Now, whenever someone's going through some crap, I get to say, sometimes you're kicking butt and eating kitty, and sometimes you're alone and beating it. That's so... 
That's so true, OP. It's so insightful. I've never thought of life that way. I hope one day we all kick butt and eat kitty. You know what I'm saying? Story 15. I'm not a tattoo artist, but I briefly dated a guy who was. He had a handful of stories of folks who made him uncomfortable, but the one that sticks out the most is the elderly dominatrix. She came in, told him what she wanted. A tattoo of a sexy lady with a paddle doing one of those physically impossible romance novel poses. She wanted it huge, and she wanted it on her back. The entire time she told him about all the dungeons she went to and how much she loved hurting boys, and how pretty he was and that he should visit her sometime. And he was trying very hard not to be like, That's nice, but I work better when you're not talking, though. Story 16. Not an artist, though I do have a lot of ink. Dated a girl once with the numbers tattooed on her wrist. As it was highly unlikely that she had been in a concentration camp, I asked her for her story. It was her social security number. Apparently her mother had done this to both her and her brother in case, and I quote, They find your body, but the head's been cut off and they need to identify you. Yeah, that family was a little messed up. Oh, and it was pretty sloppy, like prison level. So considering that and the fact that it would have been done on children, it likely wasn't a professional setup that did it. I find it hard to think of something more screwed up to do to your children than tattoo them at birth, let alone numbers on the wrist like a concentration camp victim. Oh, God. But just any tattoo on a child at birth? Why? Why? That seems like such a bad idea for so many reasons. Story 17. Not a tattoo artist, but I asked the guy who gave me my first tattoo the same question, and his response was, <sighs> I'm not proud of this, but I used to work next door to a strip club, and a stripper wanted zebra stripes in her kitty. Notice, I didn't say on or above. In her kitty. I kept telling her the same things over and over. The skin there is not meant for that. Not only will it not look good at all, it will fade very quickly. Oh, and it'll hurt worse than anything you've ever experienced. But she just kept upping the price more and more every time I said no. So, eventually I just said screw it, and basically just annihilated this stripper's kitty with some zebra stripes. I would have felt weirder about it, but I'm a guy who's tattooed about 50 dongs, so there's that. I hope the voice I gave properly conveyed how absolutely done with life this guy must be after having to do that. I feel like that in particular would just suck your soul dry. You know, just the feeling of like, okay, yeah, this is what we're doing. Story 18. The guy who did most of my tattoos said that he always tried to talk white supremacists out of getting swastikas. He would always tell them that once they get that, any fight or bad situation they would get into instantly becomes a hate crime. The guy had no sympathy for white supremacists, but he honored their free speech. And he would do the tattoos if they really wanted him to. Tough situation. I don't envy him. Look, I just gotta say, free speech does go both ways. They have the right to be like, I want this tattoo. I'm a Nazi. And then you also have the right to be, you're an idiot, I'm not giving you the tattoo. But at the end of the day, does get their money, so that's a bit of a win. I can't diss the hustle too much, I gotta be honest. I wouldn't do it, but I also don't judge him for doing it either. Story 19. I was flipping through my tattoo artist's portfolio as I was waiting for him to get set up to do the massive tribal piece on my arm. I got a bad tribal a while back and since it was pretty much unfixable as is, the only solution was to go over it with a bigger tribal piece. Anyway, I'm flipping through and turn the page to an ultra-realistic black and gray portrait of Adolf on this guy's ribs. I almost drop the book. Hey, uh, what the hell is up with this? Did you actually do this? Yeah, well, that's from my shop out in rural area about two hours away. It's a little different out there. Yeah, but, I, I mean, you tattoo Nazis? That's a long time client, and yeah, he's a Nazi jerk, but he tips well. Anyway, the joke's on him, because that's not Hitler. What do you mean? It's clearly him. Look closer. I'm not seeing it. It's Charlie Chaplin. Did you really think I'd tattoo Hitler on somebody? And yeah, it was Charlie Chaplin. Story 20. The discomfort came after. When the client was paying, I went to grab the money, and he said something along the lines of, You like that money, baby? It was awkward. I'm usually quick with comebacks, but I just stared at him until he left. Also, the woman who moaned loudly the whole time I tattooed her. She said it was to help her ease the pain, but I'm not entirely convinced, as I was near her lower regions. Also, not me, but my boss and other workers at the shop had to deal with a lady that would reach into their shorts. Some liked it, some didn't. Plus, she was aggressive and would call for the Lord's help every time she got tattooed. 
Lady, I gotta be real. I don't know if the Lord is gonna help you much if you're doing stuff like reaching into people's pants for no reason. Well, okay, sorry, not for no reason. There's a very clear reason, I suppose. I just mean, you know, without consent. It's just a, it's just a weird thing to do, you know? Story 21. Girlfriend's mom comes in. She wants a giraffe. Okay, that's cool. She wants it on her bikini line. Okay, I mean, I'm a professional. Because giraffes have eight inch tongues. Oh, what the hell. I get the stencil ready and start prepping for the tattoo. She sees the razor and says, You won't need that. I shaved for you. Nope, not okay. My boss can handle this one. They banged in the office when it was over. Story 22. Not a tattoo artist, but this girl I know wanted to get a tattoo of some clunky, inspirational quote that said, Accept your destiny and the unknown or something. The tattoo artist drew it out for her before he tattooed it. It said, Accept your destiny and the unknown. The girl is like, No, 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 not accept. The other one with an A. The guy is like, Oh, right. And changes it. He shows her and gets the okay to proceed. He finishes it and shows her the final product. A-X-C-E-P-T, your destiny and the unknown. All of her tattoos are terrible. Story 23. I went to my shop for an appointment, and as I was walking into the extremely crowded shop, my tattoo artist grabbed me and told me to come outside. As soon as we got out the door, he burst into laughter. He told me to come back to his booth and grab paperwork, so that I can check out the piece he's finishing up. But I absolutely cannot laugh. Sitting spread eagle in a chair with one foot propped up in a chair, this extremely large woman was grinning at me pointing to her crotch. At least she had underwear on, by the way. My buddy was coloring in a caution wet sign. She also informed me that the tattooed puddles dripping down her legs were in fact juices. I let out a quick, oh wow, before I had to get the hell out of the store and let out a good laugh. After she left, my buddy said it was a rough one, but she paid insanely well. We still laugh about it when I see him. Story 24. Not a tattoo artist, but I was getting a tattoo when this guy came in with a woman and handed another artist a bunch of cash. Woman got a short tattoo and they left, not a word spoken. After they left, the guy who was tattooing me said that the guy comes in once or twice a week with a different woman and gets his street name tattooed on them. His street name was Cornbread. I don't think OP or the artist realizes what was going on here. And if anyone listening needs a hint as well, I think it's pretty similar to the first story in this video. Not inspiring stuff. I feel really bad. Story 25. Not an artist, but after punk show while I was sobering up to drive, I ended up having a chat with a guy with Simba tattooed on his arm. At one point he started telling me that he got Simba because his little kid loves the Lion King. Cute but the swerve is coming. Next, he tells me he wants to get Merida, the new red-haired Disney princess, because his six-year-old daughter loves the movie and wants to be like her growing up. Ah, oh, man, that's cute. Props to being a good dad. Him. Uh, but I don't want her to be like she appears in the movie. I want her to look more, uh, promiscuous, you know? Uh... Yeah, back then they didn't wear much cloth, so I want her to be more historically accurate, you catch? Ah yes, I can't think of a better way to honor your daughter than to get a tattoo of the Disney character from her favorite movie and make her frisky. Sure, that sounds like a great way- I- come on man. Just- uh, come on. Side note, I'm gonna end this with a tiny story of my own. One of my good friends from university got Simba tattooed on his butt. It's like the really simplified Simba that Rafiki draws. And I think it's a cool butt tattoo, I gotta be honest. It's just a little thing, it doesn't stand out a whole lot, and it has meaning to him. Stuff like that, super cool to me. If you guys have any interesting tattoos, let me know in the comments. And if you don't, just thanks for watching all the way to the end. I hope you have a wonderful day or night, and I'll see you in the next one.